Dogfish sharks comprise the second largest order of sharks, with over 119 species. They inhabit the temperate and subarctic waters of both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. They have a lifespan of around 20 to 75 years and travel in large groups known as a frenzy or school. They are called a dogfish because they travel and hunt in packs, which are sometimes segregated by sex and age. Today we are going to explore the anatomy of the dogfish shark and discover the structures that makes this animal such a fascinating and apt hunter. To start out with the integumentary system, the skin consists of a superficial epidermis and a deeper dermis. The epidermis is composed of keratinized cells and living cells which allows for osmotic change to happen between the shark and the its environment. The cell becomes flatter as they approach to the body surface. Beneath the epidermis, the dermis is found, which is composed of connective tissue and chromatophores, which contain pigments that give the shark its countershading color. This coloration allows the shark to sneak up on prey and avoid predators. The dorsal side of the shark is darker than the ventral side, allowing the shark to camouflage the dorsal fin is used for stability and to aid their swimming. There are two dorsal fins, the anterior, which is the largest one, and the posterior one. The anterior fin is the one that goes above the water when the shark is close to the surface. Many sharks have spine on their dorsal fin made up of the same material of skin and teeth. For example, the dogfish, when captured by a predator or a human, it arches its back to pierce its aggressor. Apart from the damage it may create on the other animal, the spine carries poison that is secreted by glands base. The gills are the respiratory organs of the shark. They are composed of gill lamelle, blood vessels, and supporting cartilaginous structures. They are located inside of the pharyngeal pouches. The respiratory system of a shark is very different from most vertebrates. Sharks lack a trachea, lungs, and a diaphragm for gas exchange. Instead, sharks absorb oxygen from the surrounding water by passage through the gills. Sharks respire by opening and closing their mouth. After the water goes through the mouth, it goes to the gill chambers and exits through the visibly external gill slits. This allows for oxygenated water to enter into the body and for deoxygenated water to leave as well. For the model of the heart, we're using a heart fish, which is really similar to the dogfish sharks. Right here, you can see that this is the ventral chamber, and these two are the atrium. Turning the model around, you can see there's two openings. These come from the sinus venosus. Once that the oxygenated blood has come through the sinus venous, it will go to the atrium. Once it passes through the ventricle, it goes to the conus arterius, leading to the ventral aorta, which gives five pairs of different banker arteries passing the deoxygenated blood from the heart to the gills. The forebrain of the dogfish shark contains the olfactory bulbs, which are highly developed, visible by their proportions to the rest of the brain. The olfactory bulbs are the centers in the brain that are able to process different smells. The forebrain also contains other centers, including the epithalamus, pineal body, thalamus, and pituitary body. The midbrain consists of optic lobes, which are used to process visual information. The hindbrain is where the medulla oblongata is located. This portion of the brain is where the automatic functions are controlled, like breathing or heart and blood vessel function. The dogfish shark has some really neat sensory adaptations that are externally visible. First being a row of pores along the dorsal fin known as pit organs. With this, it's able to detect changes in temperature. It's very useful for a migratory species such as the dogfish shark. For example, they can follow temperature gradients along the Atlantic coast in search of other migratory species that they prey upon, like salmon. Another one of their sensory organs is the ampullae of Lorenzini. This is a line of pores located on the upper lip that contains a gelatinous substance that is connected to nerve endings. It's constantly gathering information 
on the external environment, such as changes in electrical fields, temperature, and pressure. It then relays this information back to the brain. It's a great adaptation for a predatory species that may lack sufficient cover or not have the right kind of lighting. It allows them to lie in wait, and when it detects a change in impulses, it can then clue in to where the prey is and attack. The ampullae of Lorenzini is so attuned that it can pick up the slightest fluctuations, even as low as 10 millionth of a volt, or about the energy output of a AA battery. Sharks' eyes function like cameras. They move the lens further and closer to the retina to focus. This differs from higher vertebrates that actually will change the shape of the lens in order to focus. Most fish have no eyelids. Sharks actually have immovable eyelid folds. The trunk is divided into two regions. The pericaudal cavity, a double-walled sac containing the heart and roots of the great vessels, and the pleuroperitoneal cavity. The digestive system consists of the alimentary canal. The alimentary canal allows for the passage of food from the body, from the mouth to anus. The alimentary canal runs from the mouth to the cloaca. The cloaca is the cavity at the end of the digestive tract for the release of both excretory and genital products. Food travels from the mouth to the pharynx to the esophagus and into the stomach. In the stomach, food is mixed with gastric juices and is then broken down. The esophagus connects the pharynx or the throat and stomach. The stomach is a J-shaped pouch located approximately to the left lo lateral lobe of the liver. Outside of the J is the greater curvature and the inside is the lesser curvature. The shark's liver consists of three lobes, the right lateral lobe, left lateral lobe, and the medial lobe. The liver metabolizes carbohydrates and fats and produces bile, bile that emulsifies fats in the duodenum. The liver contains epithelial cells called hepatocytes. They contain enzymes that detoxify poisons in the blood. Unique characteristics are that the liver is rich in oil, which provides buoyancy as the shark swims. The oil is also a good store of energy for the shark. The gallbladder stores and concentrates bile secreted by the liver and delivers it to the duodenum through the bile duct. The gallbladder is a round pea green structure on the under surface of the medial lobe of the liver. The pancreas converts f food into fuel for the body's cells. Two main functions are the exocrine function that helps in digestion and the endocrine function that regulates blood sugar. The spleen is a dark triangular organ near the stomach. The spleen is part of a system of macrophage cells. Macrophage cells engulf and digest foreign cells and dead cells in a process known as phagocytosis. The spleen recycles old red blood cells and platelets by removing the iron and other useful components. These cells also process and remove bacteria. The kidneys are diffused organs that run along either side of the midline. The kidneys are responsible for the excretion of hydrophilic substances such as ions, water, and other nitrogenous waste. The rectal glands, also called the digitiform gland, excretes salts from the body, thus playing a role in osmoregulation. It's connected to the colon through a small duct. It all drains into the cloaca. So now we're going to talk about sexual reproduction. This is a male dogfish shark. He has these two fins known as claspers. He'll actually take one of these clasper fins, insert it into the female's cloaca, and deposit sperm to the oviduct that way. So it's internal fertilization. Um, no one really knows when these sharks reach sexual maturity. Some say it's 10 years, some say it's 20 years, but um, it could also be influenced by external factors such as food availability, water temperature, um, stuff like that. So the female sharks have no claspers. They're oviparous. Babies develop inside of an egg sac, so they're nourished by that. Um, gestation period is around 18 to 24 months, uh, so it's kind of long for the shark, but they have a, a litter that ranges from around 1 to 20 pups. When they hatch out, they actually leave behind what is known as a mermaid's pouch. So these things will wash up on the beach sometimes. It's kind of neat to see.